All right, now that you have your base operating system installed and ready for your installation of Webman, what you're going to want to do is a couple of steps. First and foremost, there are some prerequisites required. So you're going to go ahead and install all of these. And like I said, don't worry if you miss any of these steps, they'll be down in the description. So make sure that those are installed. You're going to also want to add in, and I use Nano, you can use V or Vim or any of those. You're going to want to add in to the Etsy app uh, directory to the sources.list file. You're going to want to add the repository for Webman. Now I put comments on mine, you don't have to, but this is so I know what they are down the line. Once again, any of the uh, th parts that I put in here, I will have down in the description. So here's a repository for download.webman.com. Don't worry that it says Sarge. That's how they have it currently. It still works for Debian 8. Jesse, of course. Now, you're going to want to have the J Cameron key. Now, I'm already in root, but you know, you can go CD root or CD tilta. Either way it takes you to root. But you're going to want to download this J Cameron key, which is a GPG key. And then perform an app git add or app key, excuse me, add to add it. All right. And then it's just a matter of simply doing an app git install webmin. But before you do that, you always want to make sure to do an app git update. And then if you run into this, which I did here, you need to make sure that this app transport HTTPS is installed. So app git install app transport HTTPS. And this just adds in the ability for apt to pull down HTTPS, which why it's not installed by default. Good question. Don't have the answer, but it is not in the bare minimum of Debian 8 installs. Once that is done, what you're going to want to do, of course, is the apt get install webmin. Now, this is going to take a little while, so as soon as it's done, I'll be back. All right, now Webman is installed. You can access it via your browser. It's HTTPS, your machine's either IP address or host name, uh, if you have it configured for an external DNS entry, like in your router, and then colon 10,000. When you first come to your browser in Firefox, Chrome, IE, Edge, any browser that you use, you're gonna see a warning because you're using a self-signed certificate. Go ahead and add the exception this is just to allow your self serving certificate to be approved, and you'll be able to come into this page right here, the login page. Now, by default, Webman uses the root user, and you can change that, add a new Webman user. You sign in, and you come to the dashboard. Now, the dashboard, of course, gives you a nice little look of, you know, your CPU, you get your real memory, all this in a nice little graph, or in this case, speed dials. You get to look at your host name, the Webman version, time on the system, the type of processor, amount of uh, RAM, hard drive, so forth and so on. And of course, you can see that there's package that needs to be updated here, which of course this looks like, uh, yeah, meta package there. At this time period of the video, there's these two vulnerabilities going down. Uh, one is Meltdown, one is Spectre. Most likely this is a package for Meltdown and Spectre. Uh, just from the looking at it and being familiar with the ones I've seen. But um, from here, you'll be able to work with the hardware. You can work with the networking of the system, like the firewall, network configurations. You'll be able to look at the servers that are installed on your machine. You get some uh, access to file manager, um, you know, the SSH logins. Uh, system and server status, the being able to upload and download to the server. Now, when you see cluster, you're immediately going to probably go, oh, hey, I got built-in cluster ability. You do, but for webmin and usermin. These are all for webmin and usermin options. So that way you can cluster your servers together in that regard, share your packages and whatnot. Not a full cluster. So if you're looking for pacemaker 
or you know any of those other heartbeat services um, load balancing things like that you are going to have to install those services and they will be located under most likely services or networking so once you go to install them that's where they're going to be and speaking of those here's some unused modules that from a click of a button you can actually go ahead and install like okay I want smart drive uh, monitoring right in this situation you'd actually have to make sure to uh, manually install it it's not going to allow you to do it so you either need to install it through the um, app get up uh, install or you need to modify the module configuration to point to it that's what this page means but if you go to something like for example postfix postfix here the postfix packages can be automatically installed you click here and voila it goes through the process of installing it and then once it's done doing the install you'll be able to go ahead and configure it from within webmin so just give it a minute to install here now we can go ahead and return to postfix and there it is you'll be able to go into your options for you know setting up the general options smtp authentication access to user mailboxes, you can look at the mail queue, all of this option straight from here.